After a Final Four run, Syracuse basketball suits up for another year and another opportunity for postseason success. A lot has changed since last time this team took the court. We'll sit down with players and head coach Jim Beheim to get you caught up on all you need to know. So grab your dome dog, your favorite jersey, and get ready. Basketball preview show starts right now. Welcome inside the Carmelo Anthony Basketball Center for Citrus TV's 2016 Basketball Preview Show. I'm Lauren Walsh alongside Jared Barton. And Jared, Syracuse shocked a lot of people with their performance last year in March. Yeah, you know, it was a magical run indeed to finish off last season. Let's take a look back and see exactly how the Orange got all the way to the Final Four. Guys, the NCAA appeals coming out and saying that Coach Beheim's nine-game suspension will become effective immediately. I wanted this one for him tonight. Jones has to chuck it up, and it's deflected away. Syracuse wins the game. Crossover dribble, left wing three for the win. Cooney, no good. Pittsburgh survives. This loss most likely ends any hope Syracuse had of making the NCAA tournament. Attacks the left side. His layup doesn't go. Ball tipped around. Syracuse gets it. Hit by the shot. Lays it in. The Orange Miracle is complete. Syracuse is headed to the Final Four. One of the most improbable runs in the history of Syracuse basketball ends. Really proud, more proud of this team than I think any team that I've ever coached. Every year we know Syracuse will lose some guys at the end of the season, but last year's departures seem to have a particularly big impact for the Orange. Yeah, you know, whether it had been a graduation or some left to the NBA draft, without these players, they would have never have made that postseason run. And that impressive postseason run wouldn't have been possible without some of the names on this list. Grad students Mike Benajay and Trevor Cooney exhausted their eligibility and said goodbye to SU with diplomas in hand. Benajay averaged a team high four assists per game and nearly 18 points per game. His backcourt partner averaged 35% from the field and behind the arc. Freshman phenom Malachi Richardson elected for the NBA draft and got picked up by the Charlotte Bobcats to then be traded to the Sacramento Kings. In his first and only year in Orange, Richardson dazzled SU fans with his clutch three-point shooting and his consistent contribution of 13 points per game. Those will be some tough numbers to replace. On to some more positive news. Syracuse returned some key players from last season, and one of those guys has a big opportunity to step up for the Orange. His name is Tyler Lydon. Brianna Adams has more on the rising sophomore. Tyler Lydon had nothing short of a memorable freshman year at Syracuse. After an average regular season, the Orange's Final Four run in the tournament was made possible by impressive performances from the freshmen. In the Elite Eight, Lydon shortened the UVA lead at the end of the first half with a field goal with just one shoe. Yet the historic run has only motivated Leiden to work harder and prepare the incoming class. Step up my game and be more vocal this year. You know, I like being able to help guys and, and trying to teach them. You know, like I was saying, that none of the like about Syracuse our zone or anything is easy to understand. So I just want to be able to get back to these freshmen and the transfers and all that and try and help them. Assistant coach Mike Hopkins says Leiden's persevering attitude has motivated the new freshmen and transfers. Uh, you know, the great thing about Tyler is not only is he a heck of a player. He's unselfish, he's a leader, and all he wants to do is win. And when, when you have a guy like that and all these other guys seeing him and being around him, that's just complete. Tyler Lydon uses his veteran experience to help prepare the new team. Even grad transfer Andrew White, a veteran himself, says that Lydon's work ethic and resume have made him especially impressive for only being a sophomore. He's, you know, he's a student of the game. He gets in, he, he works. It's fun to kind of see 
a guy, you know, a sophomore who gets it. For the upcoming season, the forward is focused on working with the new teammates to achieve that final piece to the puzzle. I'm just worried about what's going on this season with these guys and getting back to, you know, playing in a Final Four and hoping for a national championship and all that. Brianna Adams, Citrus TV. Even though some major leaders have left the team, the Orange still returns plenty of season talent. Tyler Lydon tops that list with an impressive 41% three-point shooting percentage. He will look to take a leadership role on this team in his sophomore campaign. Frank Howard showed promise in his limited role last season and will now look to take the starting point guard spot headed into year two. His 32 assists were good enough for fourth on the team despite never starting a game. And of course, we can't forget about one of the biggest postseason contributors in Tyler Roberson. The big man had 56 total rebounds during the NCAA tournament. Coming up on Citrus TV's 2016 basketball preview show, we'll take a look at some of the new guys joining the team and Jared sits down with Tyler Lydon. Stick around. Fancy pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Here's your check. You, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Citrus TV's Basketball Preview Show. Alongside Lauren Walsh, I'm Jared Barton. Lauren, we talked a lot about last year. Let's look forward to the new arrivals. That's right, Jared. Plenty of fresh faces joined Jim Beheim's squad. One you might be seeing a lot of is graduate student transfer guard Andrew White III. The Richmond, Virginia native spent his first two years of college at Kansas and then transferred to Nebraska. As a Cornhusker, he made big contributions, including a 25-point effort in the team's final game of the season. White's fellow transfer guard John Gillen also bounced around schools. Gillen started his first year at Arkansas Little Rock and then redshirted at Colorado State. There is also a group of freshmen that could be making an impact sometime this season. Tyus Battle tops the list as the most exciting name coming in. The six foot six guard from New Jersey has been making headlines here in central New York since he committed to SU in July of 2015. Six foot eight forward Matthew Moyer is a four star recruit from Columbus, Ohio, who is destined to bring in some physical play down low. Finally, Torian Thompson is the last to commit on the list, dating back to this past July. He is the tallest out of the frosh, standing at six foot nine. The pair of transfer guards, along with Providence transfer Pascal Chukwu, have potential to log some serious minutes for Syracuse. Citrus TV's Christian de Guzman takes a look at how they could contribute and why they chose SU as their final destination. Maybe it's the quality of the coaches. I needed um, a place where um, I'll have like a coach who really teach me um, the game of basketball. Maybe it's the deep tradition. You know, getting back to a big basketball city is always appealing. Or maybe it's the promise of opportunity. As a 
basketball player, what more could you ask for? Andrew White III, John Gillen, and Pascal Truku all made the decision to transfer to Syracuse for a good reason, to increase their basketball skills and to win. I mean, we have a good nucleus of guys that can, you know, have a promising run. So I thought it'd be good to kind of come in and contribute to that. Not only do the transfers bring a hunger to win, all three can help this season with their immense skill sets. If I can be able to um, alter the shot, not necessarily block it, and be um, a big defensive presence, um, I think that can contribute to our success this year. Uh, I bring speed, pace, um, someone that gets their teammates involved, and I can shoot, uh, I can rebound. So that, that kind of helps when you have a guard who can come in and help clean up the glass. White Gillen and Chukwu may have had experience at their previous colleges, but here at Syracuse, it's a whole different ball game. Jim Beheim's unique system is usually very hard to learn, and according to the head man, each transfer is still improving. They have to learn a new system, um, and sometimes the, you know that's they have some old bad old habits, not necessarily bad habits, but old habits that fit in someplace else that might not fit in here. So it takes an adjustment period. With one of his deepest rotations in recent history, Jim Beheim looks to fully use the skill sets of White Gillen and Chukwu as Syracuse looks to return to the Final Four in Arizona. Reporting from the Carrier Dome, Christian Guzman, Citrus TV. Now we're joined alongside sophomore forward Tyler Leiden. Tyler, how's everything today? It's going good. Can't complain. Another day in paradise. Now, uh, what are you looking back on the on the last se on last season? What what had what was that like for you? What was the moment and the experience like uh, throughout your freshman year? Yeah, I mean it was unbelievable. Uh, you know, the team we went through a lot of ups and downs. You know, early on or in the middle part of our season, and then just to bounce back and go to the Final Four was. A crazy experience, you know, you, you dream of playing in the tournament as a little kid, you grow up watching it, so to get there and to be with the group of guys you worked really hard with, it's just an incredible feeling. Now, a brand new season, new chapter in your uh, collegiate basketball career, what has you most excited for coming into this year? I mean, probably just the new team that we have, you know, it's a different feel being back with these guys, and uh, but at the same time, it's a great feeling, you know, we got a different team, we could throw a lot of different looks at opposing teams, and uh, I'm just excited to get out there and play with these guys. You know, we've all worked hard so far. We got a long way to go, but uh, you know, I'm just real excited to be out there. Now we you lost a couple of, of key names last year uh, to the draft or graduation. Uh, what does it feel like to you when you hear people say that you are now going to be stepping into some of those leadership roles uh, that other players have had in years past? Yeah, it means a lot. Um, you know, I know what leadership can do for the team. You know, I had it last year with Trav and Mike and all those guys, you know, just being in your ear. Um, and their advice they gave me was all crucial, and I felt like that was a big reason why I became the player I was. Um, so I'm just trying to step up this year, be more vocal, and help these younger guys and transfers out. Speaking of the transfers, a lot of new faces, also a lot of freshmen joining uh, up this year, making a pretty deep cast. Uh, as a Syracuse fan, who should be, you be on the lookout for uh, out of the new faces? I mean, honestly, you can't, you can't pick one. They all do uh, different things. They're all great players. They all really work hard. So, um, you know, it should just be an exciting year for overall for everybody. Now, you've got teams like Georgetown coming in back into the Dome. You also have Duke as well. Uh, you didn't get to uh, host Duke last year at home. Right. Uh, what are those? What's the importance of those wins? You know, it, it, of those games, uh, trying to get those wins uh, coming into ACC play. Yeah, I mean, all the, any of those big time games are, are huge for you as a team. You know, just a confidence booster, and uh, anytime you can get a win in the ACC is huge. You know, you need those games to, to be able to improve. And um, you know, but right now we're just focused on getting through our first scrimmage or exhibition game. And, uh, you know, just working in practice and stuff. So we're just trying to work hard and focus on that right now, not trying to look too far ahead. Of course. And now the million-dollar question that everybody is, is, is asking and very wondering about, <laughs> is the stash and beard going to stay this year? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I'm just kind of going with the flow right now. We'll see, though. Well, you know what? Good luck to you this season Thank and uh, have a great, great year. Okay? Thank you. Appreciate it. Coming up next, we'll hear from the man himself, Coach Beheim, and we'll have predictions on who will crack the starting five for the Orange this season. Stay tuned at Citrus TV's Basketball Preview Show. They said I have troll teeth. That my voice sounded like a possessed baby doll. That no one would ever love someone as stupid as me. That I was fat. Ugly. Disgusting. 
The effect of bullying is potent. We will no longer be the silent majority. Now, when you see online bullying, there's something you can do about it. We're going to take action with the eye. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness. I am a witness, I am a witness and so are you. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Hey Lauren, I'm looking for coverage of all things SU basketball. Any idea where I should look? Funny you ask, Jared. Citrus TV has coverage all season long. You can check out CitrusTV.com and our Twitter, at CitrusTVSports, for the latest on the team. Well, we talked about him earlier in the program. We know Matthew Moyer loves to play basketball, but that's not his only skill. Citrus TV's Chris Venzen has more on the man off the court. <laughs> stressed about life, school, I can go play the violin and I'm in a completely different world. He has so much balance in his life, he's so positive and, and it's just he's a special kid. He's, he's going to be that guy that with basketball or without basketball is going to be ultra, ultra successful. Syracuse freshman Matt Moyer began playing the violin before he was barely big enough to hold the instrument. Over the years, the violin stayed the same size but the Ohio native blossomed into a six foot eight, four star power forward. Through it all, the violin stayed by his side. It's something I still do and I still enjoy, and uh, obviously uh, I love the violin, I love all types of music, so it's, I think it's a good part of me. At one time, Matt wanted to quit the violin to avoid his friend's ridicule, but his parents wouldn't let him. We were like, uh, no, you're not gonna quit. You're gonna stick with it, and uh, you'll, you'll, you'll thank us later. But why worry about the violin when Matt could focus on the NBA? We thought that uh, teaching him a, another discipline that, that is just as difficult as basketball would make him a little more well-rounded. So they can't take that away from you. So when a foot injury this summer took basketball away from Moyer, his parents' wisdom served him well. You know, it, was just, it was so tough for me, you know, getting back in shape and show coach that I'm able to compete at this level and uh, play, play uh, significant minutes. Now back on the court, Matt's hurdled his first obstacle at Syracuse. Without a doubt, he'll handle any other challenges like all the rest, in stride, with the composure of a concert violinist. Chris Benzen, Citrus TV. Just, we have to make some shots for us to be successful. If I had anybody else, he wouldn't play a minute. Not a minute. All my years of coaching, I uh, couldn't be, uh, happier for this group. The two seniors had to be very strong all year. You know, this I'm really proud, more proud of this team than I think any team that I've ever coached. Now we welcome head coach Jim Beheim. Coach, thanks for being with us. Good to be with you. And after last season's Final Four run, what are your expectations for this year's team? Well, obviously, uh, what happened last year was uh, completely unexpected. And, get based on the regular season. That can happen. That's what the tournament can do when you're a pretty good team. You can get it going and things fall your way. This year on paper, I mean, we've got more depth and uh, should be a, a, a more complete team. But how it all comes together and how you do in the tournament, if you get in the tournament, is, uh, you know, you just don't know what's going to come. But last year was a great ride, a great effort from those guys. And, uh, you know, you really, I, I, I appreciate it as much as any team I've ever coached. With Trevor Cooney and Mike Benajay graduating, how do you as a coach go about filling the void of leadership there? Well, they were great. They really did a great job because it was a tough season and they kept us going throughout the season. That's when you really need leaders, when things are not going so well. And they were great. Uh, you know, we have seniors this year that we think can do that. Uh, we brought in a couple fifth-year guys that are veterans. We have uh, Daywon Coleman, uh, you know, Tyler Robeson are seniors, so they've been through it. They know what it takes. Um, I think we'll be all right. 
with all the talent on the roster this year, it looks like this could be one of the deepest teams you've had in a few years now. Yeah, there's no question. We have more guys. We were struggling with six, seven, eight guys the last couple of years. But three or four years ago, we had nine guys, and we had a good year. And I, I think this team is uh, built to have good success. Going off that, how would you describe this team? You know, it's uh, we got veterans. We got a lot of veterans. We got some young players that I think are, are good players. We've got pretty good shooting. Uh, we've got better size than we've had. Um, so you know, I, I think we've got a lot of a lot of positives. I, I don't really see uh, any big negatives with this group. This season, you have Georgetown, St. John's, and UConn on the schedule. It's got to feel a little bit like the old Big East. Yeah, you know, we wanted to play those teams, and it'll, it'll be great. It'll be great games. It's fun to play against them. You've got to play good non-league games, and you might as well play those teams rather than a Big Ten team or something. <laughs> and, you know, we still got Wisconsin as a team picker in the Big Ten. So we've got a great schedule, and it will help us get ready for the ACC. The Georgetown game in the Carrier Dome. How do you think that game will feel for new players as well as fans who have never experienced that rivalry firsthand? Well, it's still a good rivalry. It's, it, was a great, it was our biggest rival, and it's still a big one. And it will be the night we honor Pearl, so it'll be, a, it'll be a great night, and we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it as well. Thanks so much for joining us, Coach. Good luck this season. Thank you. Now, Syracuse is going to have a fresh starting lineup coming into the 2016 season. Let's take a look and see exactly who we project to be in the starting five. At point guard, it's looking like it's going to be Frank Howard. We saw him a lot last year, especially towards the end of the season. Andrew White, the transfer from Nebraska, is most likely going to be the shooting guard. And we know Tyler Lydon will probably take that number three spot out on the court. Can't forget about Tyler Roberson, another guy who was very important to last year's success will be stepping in again as the power forward. Your starting center will most likely be Dwan Coleman. With Syracuse's depth, Jim Beheim could sub in a whole new set of five guys who are pretty solid for the starters. John Gillen likely to go in at point guard for Howard, Tyus Battle the shooting guard, and Matthew Moyer with experience and height to fit the small forward position. Then at power forward, Torian Thompson would fit the role nicely as a sub for Roberson. And big man Pascal Chukwu likely to go in at center. And you're also thinking that Pascal and John Gillen will probably be the two to fight it for the sixth man off the bench. After the break, we'll take a look at Syracuse's schedule and bring in our CC analysts to give us some more insight on the team. Stay with us for the final stretch of Citrus TV's basketball preview show. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to go out there to rain. Going to get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, quick. Oh, yeah. Yes. So much fun. Yeah, Dad. You're getting so wet. Oh, just... I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Yeah, we're just looking to improve on that, of course, and hopefully bring a national championship back to uh, Syracuse. But we can play a different style than last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel real good about this year. You know, we've got depth. We've got a lot of different ways we can win the game. We, uh, we got options, and uh, those are all positive things when you're going into battle. We have more depth, which is true, and we have, uh, you know, people at every position, a couple guys at every position, which we haven't had in a long time. 
Welcome back to the Mellow Center for the final segment of Citrus TV's 2016 basketball preview show. We've met the new players, we've talked to the head man. Now let's take a look at the schedule for the upcoming season. Syracuse's non-conference schedule begins on Friday, November 11th as the Orange takes on Colgate in the Carrier Dome. Then they move to the Barclays Center to take on South Carolina in the last game of the Brooklyn Hoops Holiday Invitational. That game is on November 26th. Then Syracuse takes on Wisconsin in Wisconsin. That should be a good game on Tuesday, November 29th. UConn and Syracuse face off at MSG on December 5th. And then Syracuse takes on rival Georgetown in the Carrier Dome. SU fans are sure to be looking forward to that one. St. John's also comes to the Carrier Dome along with Cornell to close out the non-conference schedule on December 27th. And as usual, the ACC basketball schedule is always competitive. Starting off on New Year's Day, the Orange head to Chestnut Hill to take on the likes of Boston College. Then, just about six days later, Syracuse takes on Pitt at the Carrier Dome on January 7th. On Martin Luther King Day, it's time for the Orange to head down to Chapel Hill in the Dean Dome to take on the Tar Heels. Just a couple of days later, they'll head to South Bend, Indiana to take on Notre Dame. Then it's back to the Peterson Event Center on February 11th to take on Pitt. Louisville comes to the Carrier Dome on February 13th, followed by Duke on February 22nd. Of course, that is the Wednesday game that everyone is waiting for. And finally, the season ends with a game against Louisville on February 26th. That is down in Cardinal Country. Now we bring in our Cuse Countdown team to give us their take on the Syracuse Orange this season. Thanks, Lauren. Alongside Drew Carter and Matt Liberman, I'm Marco Sochi. Guys, basketball season is upon us. Who's the most important player for SU this season? It has to be the Providence transfer. Seven foot two, Pascal Chukwu. What he's able to do defensively, he can be an enforcer. When you have him in the middle of your defense, you do not need to double team in the post like they had to all of the time last year with Leiden and Roberson. It allows you to spread the defense. They already have a huge team. This 2-3 will be tough to stop with Chukwu in the middle. He can be one of the uh, best defensive centers in the country. Now, Matt, I'm going to go with the guy who you mentioned as a reason why Pascal Chukwu might not be as essential is Tyler Lydon. He proved he can anchor the 2-3 zone in the NCAA tournament last year. Four blocks per game during the Orange's run to the Final Four. Lydon is one of the best players in the nation on both sides of the ball. Very great player, and he's going to be the most important guy for Syracuse. Those are your two most important players. Now it's time to figure out where Syracuse finishes in the ACC. Drew, we'll start with you. And Marco, hear me out here. Syracuse, very talented, but I'm going to pick them to finish fifth in the ACC, and it's just because the conference is so loaded. You can look at the national top 10 and legitimately say half of it could come from this conference. You look at Duke, UNC, Virginia, Louisville, and then Syracuse. It's just because the conference is so stacked, that's why I have Syracuse finishing at number five. Drew, you got to believe. This team, I think, will finish second in the ACC, only behind Duke, led by Harry Giles. This team is loaded from top to bottom. They have two players that can play at every single position. You have three players on this team that could arguably be the best player at any other school in a Power 5 conference. The 2-3 the will be tough to stop with Pascal, and Tyus Battle is possibly the best shooter in the country. Guys, most important question now. Everybody wants to know it. Where does Syracuse finish in the NCAA tournament? This team certainly has title hopes but I don't think it will be able to attain them. I think a Final Four is reasonable. Like I said, this team is absolutely stacked from top to bottom. The 2-3 zone is always tough to stop in the tournament. And with Pascal up there, you won't be able to score on them. Matt, you just told me to believe in the Orange about a minute ago. I'm going to take it one step further. Syracuse wins the national championship, cuts down the nets in Phoenix. You just said it. They're loaded top to bottom on the roster, plus the 2-3 zone. You mentioned it, the great equalizer in the tournament. Jim Beheim gets one more ring, and then he retires and rides off into the sunset. Drew making a whole lot of Orange fans happy. Jared Lauren, back to you. That's about all the time we have here in the Mellow Center for Citrus TV's 2016 Basketball Preview Show. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Citrus TV Sports or online at www.citrustv.com for the latest on the Orange basketball team throughout the 2016 season. Alongside Lauren Walsh, I'm Jared Barton, thanking you once again for joining us and have a great day.